Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today, and this is about Incro Chat. Miles Headley today has made history. He's the first person in the UK to successfully have his charges dropped in relation to an Encro Chat case. Miles Heedley was arrested in June last year after French police hacked EncroChat and it gave them access to millions of messages. Thousands of people used EncroChat in the UK and some of them used it to discuss crimes. Judges ruled in the UK that this could be used in evidence against their citizens even though the European Court of Justice ruled that this was mass surveillance and using this evidence was against human rights. Miles Heedley is 24 years old and his charges were dismissed this month after his lawyers successfully argued that the Met Police had failed to prove incriminating EncroChat messages about the supply of drugs had been sent by him or that he had ever held the device in the first place. This is a very interesting story and it is mainly about his lawyers. He must have the best lawyers to have worked this hard to have picked apart what the prosecution was alleging. Dutch and French police hacked EncroChat in April of last year and the arrests in the UK took place in June. They say that over a thousand people were arrested as part of the wider operation in connection to the EncroChat hack. But these people were not found in possession of the devices. And this is a massive factor as the evidence is based on remotely obtained messages. It has since emerged that many of the people that were arrested were already on police radars and under surveillance before the EncroChat operation was launched. He was arrested on June the 24th. They had suspicion that Miles was a user of an Encro chat phone that was sending messages concerning the supply of drugs. He was out on license at the time of his arrest for an earlier prison sentence in 2015. He was jailed for eight years after he was found guilty of firearm offences and he was also arrested at his dad's home for that case back in 2013 and he was 17 years old at the time. And Met police found a loaded revolver and sawn off shotgun at his home and he was found guilty of firearm offences but not the attempted murder and he was recalled to prison due to his license conditions. Despite the phone never being found on him, they believed they could prove that Miles was the owner of the phone and the EncroChat name called Next Builder. They used mobile phone cell site analysis that located it near to his address and the password used on the phone was his surname. He was charged with one count of conspiracy to supply cocaine and another of conspiracy to supply cannabis between April the 1st and June of 2020. The prosecution William Davies said that the mobile phone cell site analysis used the EncroChat and Heedley's personal mobile phone were near his home. He also said there was many hundreds of other homes in the area that were in question in relation to the EncroChat devices and they could have been held at any one of these properties and that it was unlikely that a sophisticated criminal who was using one for anonymity would use his surname as the password. They argued that the fact that Miles had previous convictions and he was known in the area means that other criminals know of his name. The defence then went on to say that criminals delight in using other people's names to avoid detection and to simply muddy the waters in police investigations. What better way, he said, for next builder, the username of the EncroChat, to do this than to use the surname of a notorious criminal in the local neighbourhood? The judge said, could a reasonable jury, properly directed, taking the prosecution's case into account, confirm that the defendant and the user are one and the same person? In my judgment, the answer to that is no. In short, it appears that the evidence against the defendant would not be sufficient for him to be properly convicted on either count. I therefore dismiss the charges upon which this is based and dismiss both counts. Lawyers for EncroChat defendants are expected to make similar applications for cases to be dismissed following this outcome and the judgment is still being awaited in a separate EncroChat case where the defendant has applied to have evidence taken away 
and ruled as inadmissible. They argued that some of the messages were obtained in real time as messages were being sent and this constitutes as a live intercept which is admissible in British courts and this ruling is being reviewed at the moment but from the looks of things this isn't going to change. And Miles is very lucky to have gotten off with this case. So I hope he sorts his life out and gets back on track. And I know some people feel like because we've been covering so many stories in relation to convictions that we haven't focused as much on the privacy aspects and what the police have been doing. But of course, we try to not be biased. We try to just cover the stories as they come in. And it's only now that it's emerging with the indiscrepancies in the cases that we can now start to cover them sorts of topics. We have mentioned the mass surveillance aspect before in relation to the European Court of Justice ruling on mass surveillance. But in this part of the video, I want to talk about GCHQ and a man called Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden worked for the NSA in America, the National Security Agency, and he actually turned whistleblower similar to Julian Assange in 2013, and he revealed how the government was spying on their citizens. He also revealed a lot of information about how the UK and the US work together, and the HQ in the UK is GCHQ. And he revealed in 2013 that the US and the UK security services are routinely collecting, processing and storing vast quantities of digital communications, email messages, posts and private messages on social networks, internet histories and phone calls. The UK government hasn't publicly accepted that the mass spying programs exist, but they do not deny them either. Such as the program like Tempora, the mass surveillance system allegedly run by the government's communication HQ. And this is a mass surveillance on an industrial level that is unlawful. Amnesty International says they're taking the UK government to court in relation to these offences. They say the government programs intercepting of data in most of the fiber optic communications cables in the country are the biggest proportions of gathering that they've ever in the history of man. They are gathering information from Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, Facebook messages, US companies, and it is likely the data would travel through the servers and outside of the UK. 38 million people in the UK use Facebook, and through the social media use alone, the government can keep tabs on more than half of the UK's population. Dreamy Smurf is the power management tool, which means turning your phone on or off without you knowing. Even if I've turned my phone off. Right. And then we've got Nosy Smurf. What's Nosy Smurf? Nosy Smurf is the, the hot micing tool. So for example, if it's in your pocket, they can turn the microphone on and listen to everything that's going on around you. Even if my phone is switched off? Even if your phone's... Tempera, what monitors the UK via the fiber optic cables and carries 10 gigabytes of data a second. That's 110 CDs of information every minute to the headquarters. And they wasn't exaggerating when they described it as mastering the internet. Over 300 GCHQ and 250 NSA staff are tasked in processing all of that data. Specific searches around 40,000 trigger words, like keywords, email or web addresses, identify what they need to look at. Valuable data can be kept for three days and metadata for 30 days. One leaked document states that the metadata is usually kept so they can pull anything and everything they need to. Amnesty International goes on to say that the surveillance is beyond national security and nobody even knows exactly how many people are being monitored. Edward Snowden spoke to the Council of Europe earlier in 2020 and he said that he's almost certain that they have been gathering the information on their citizens with organisations like Amnesty Court in Tempora's very wide remit. It is likely that sensitive communications between activists around the world will have been monitored and stored by the governments and because the processes and systems are running complete secrecy, we have no idea what information is being shared or stored. This is all about our privacy and the fact that privacy should mean privacy. The revelations from Edward Snowden and many different whistleblowers from security, security agencies has revealed that we are far from safe and secure. 
and the way that the UK government has reacted to EncroChat and the way they're dismissing the fact that this is mass surveillance shows since leaving Brexit the repercussions that this could really have on our freedom of speech and also our privacy. So I really appreciate you joining me today. Rest in peace to Zach as well and I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a comment and shared this on social media and don't forget to follow us online as well. Send us your stories via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or the email in the about section. I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace. And second, the capability for such companies who offer services to UK customers to assist in specific UK national security or criminal investigations. So what's extraordinary about this law being passed in the UK is that it very closely mirrors the Protect America Act of 2007 that was passed in the United States at the request of the National Security Agency in any circumstance to pass an emergency law uh, when we're not in a time of total war. You know, we don't have bombs falling, we don't have U-boats in the harbor. Uh, and yet... Uh